Hello everybody! We're going to be continuing on and pushing forward with the sequel to a game that I played very recently. We're going to be playing Ape Escape 2, which is, I think, the weakest of the Ape Escapes. You may disagree, but but it definitely changed things. I mean, look at this. It's got a different kind of style to it. Everything's a lot smoother, kind of more cartoony. The music... Take that music and you're going to be hearing things like that a lot. Um... I really think a lot of it's the weed. It brought some interesting things to the series, and I'll show you as we go through it, and we'll we'll have a good time, you know? It did some things that definitely improved the series, it did other things that kind of question it, but we'll have a good time, we're gonna catch those monkeys. So here we go, Ape Escape 2, we're gonna be starting a new game, obviously. Press the start button, start the new game up, and see what's got to offer us. Look, oh, it's a cutscene already. I mean, obviously, immediately, this game looks a lot better than Ape Escape 1 did. Um, the art style feels a little different. It feels a lot more cartoony than Ape Escape 1 tried to be. I don't know what exactly that is, but it kind of fits the way the game is supposed to be, but I don't feel like it does a good job of continuing on on one, so I don't know. It, it still works. Still like it. It's a professor! He looks pretty snazzy. Looks like he's going on vacation or something. What you need, professor? You got pants! Of course, professor. Those monkeys need pants. They can't be running around naked now. I'll help you out. Look at them, look how stretchy they are, holy crap. I don't know why the monkeys need pans like that, but maybe they won't rip them off. Oh, jeez, they broke everything. Well, you go, Ash, catch them. I, and that's... Quit complaining, Misty. Everything's okay. There's just no way. Uh oh, I don't think pants are the only thing in there. What the monkey helmets? Uh oh. Oh Jimmy, what did you do? No it, it Jimmy You screw up everything you touch. Look at what you've done. Pippa G. That little thing. So we got a baby monkey, and it's cute, and he could fly for some reason. Well, that's not good. Well, he's trying to eat pants. Look at him. One of them in the background there. He's gonna eat pants. It's weird. Maybe they look like but uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Everybody, look the hell out. That one, there he goes. Except for that one monkey. Oh wait, no, there, there he is. All right, he caught on. What should we do? They look like they're having lots of fun. What are you talking about? You have to get all the monkeys. Jimmy, you're so oblivious. Didn't you play Ape Escape One? Why me? Because you done goofed, it, Jimmy. Put him in his place, Misty Natalie. Excuse me. So yeah, we're gonna go and capture three Pokemon -y monkeys. We're gonna catch three monkeys. We gotta catch them all. So if you noticed already, there's a very distinct lack of spike here. Instead, we're gonna be playing as Ash catch Jimmy. And, and look it, he's got all the things that uh, Spike could do, except better. Um, that stun club, when you swing it around, you could even move with it a little. You're not super fast, but you're not stuck to the same place, so that's nice. Jimmy has all the same sneaking stealth abilities that that Spike had, except when you jump, you can catch the jump on monkeys. So club this guy and send him home. So look, it gives you a name of every single monkey you catch. That's kind of cool. Adds a little bit of personality to the monkeys. Um, instead of collecting triangles in this game, they've they've made them circles because the PlayStation 2 can handle more circular objects. 
than the PlayStation good, clearly. Where the hell is that third monkey? There he is. Alright. Get you in the... Come here. Come here. Get you in the net. And I like the way ke catching monkeys looks. Like, it all turns into space around you and everything. And monkeys have the ability to kind of juke you out and dodge it now, too. So the monkeys are smarter. They're a lot harder to deal with in this game than the first one. And there you go. First three monkeys caught. That's the first level. So we'll go to the new time station, which isn't a time station at all, because there's... The it's a travel station now. We're not going through time. And, yeah, Jimmy destroyed the laboratory, so... Way to go, Jimmy. Go to different places. I'm sure it is, Met and Natalie, so thank you. So we go to Breezy Village. The level setup in this game, it doesn't feel like it's as organized as <coughs> Ape Escape 1's did. Oh, shit! Monkey Radar! Already? We're already getting a second gadget. Third gadget, excuse me. But yeah, the level layout, it doesn't really feel as organized as Ape Escape 1, because in the first game, you're going through time, you're going through different eras and everything, and like that shit makes sense, you know? You're going to different places. Let's see, let's go through this door, because it's telling us to. But in this game, they just kind of, like, throw different areas at you. And I understand that the monkeys didn't go through time, they just went to different places in the world. But you could have at least organized that into sections or something. So we got all these buttons here, but how are we going to tell which one's the right one? Well, if we take a look at the monkey stuff, then it tells us. The descriptions of those monkeys will tell us which button to press. And that's kind of showing off that not only can you search for monkeys, but you can get, like, a little... A little bit of info on them, what they like to do, and their spare time, and how good they are at being monkeys, I guess. So, second level. You can tell already that a lot of these levels, they kind of have more of a monkey influence to them than the first game did. Which, I mean... I don't know, it doesn't make as sense as the first game, because the first game they were trying to just straight up change time, and that shit makes sense. But this one, you got those... Those windmills, except they're bananas instead of windmill blades, and we'll catch Walter here. All the enemies in this game, they look, I don't know, like those pigs have poop on their head, and most of the flying creatures look like some sort of fruit or vegetable or something. It's kind of weird. I don't know, it's creative. I'll give them that. Get John in our net. And let's see. Something cool, uh, I'll explain that when it happens, actually, but, um... The little circles don't do what the triangles did in the first game. You don't get a hundred to get a one-op. Instead, you could spend them on things. And I'll show you that later when the time comes around. Oh, there's another monkey in there. It's... Well, it's not nice. It's not nice. I mean, just because he thought he could hide in a box, you don't go and call him something like... It's not a nice game. With four monkeys done, fireworks are exploding, we'll send back home. Alright, four monkeys down, we'll head on to the next place. Let's see what we got going. Alright, port com, we're gonna go to a, looks like a water level here. We can't go to a water level without the water net, look at that! They're just throwing gadgets at us left and right, we don't have a break in the gadgets. <laughs> they kind of spaced them out a lot more in one, but you get new ones in two. I'll spoil that for you right now. There's a few new gadgets to collect. Which is probably why they didn't space out the old ones as much. They just want to throw them at you, like, get this shit together, because we're going to do new things soon. So the water net is actually a lot better than it was in the first game. Uh, the first game, the controls are really awkward. The second game, you can still throw a net out and catch monkeys in the water. But it's a lot easier to dive into the water and dive out of it as well. You don't have to click any analog sticks in or whatever. Um, all you have to do is press um, the right analog stick down to descend and up to descend. And it's very helpful. The controls are a whole lot better in this game, so I applaud them for that. There's a couple other gadgets that they really refined and made more useful to kind of cut out any unnecessary anything about them. So good on them for improving the gadgets. I like that. So, port com, we gotta catch... I wasn't paying attention. We gotta catch monkeys. There's some monkeys enjoying tea, and that guy's floating on a fountain. Oh, we gotta catch five of them, look. Conveniently tell he's in that corner there, so... 
I like how they do that. The heads-up display is kind of improved, too. For the most part, they really took a step in the right direction with the Ape Escape series in this game. I, I feel like I have a lot to complain about it, because I do feel it's the weakest in the series. I'm not a fan of the music, I'm not a fan of the art design, even though a lot of the graphics look smoother. I'm not a fan of them naming a monkey bidet. That's gross, guys. Really. And anyway, there's a cookie right there, if you notice. These are a lot harder to find in this game, and I'll show you why in just a second here. There's an important reason for that. Um, health works a bit differently in this game than it does in the original Ape Escape. Um, here, I'm gonna get hit by something. There you go, perfect, okay. Let's say him hit me. There we go, you see, my cookie didn't disappear, it just crumbled a little bit. It's broken, but not out. It means you get ten hits in this game, but you gotta make them count, because they're gonna last ya. Um, when we exit this level, we're still gonna have that cookie broken. You don't get your health refilled every time you go back to the warp station. Um, so you gotta make it count, you know? You gotta be careful with your health, um, because... Cookies really don't appear as often as they did in the first game. Things don't drop them as much. They aren't around in the levels. And there's a couple extra ways to get them. You can get lucky with buying them. I'll show you the buying thing probably after this. I don't know if I remember. I gotta get over to these guys. There's two monkeys right here, and that's all I need. So, Monkey Chino. It's a coffee pun because he was drinking coffee. And then you or. You're just, you're sunny, whatever. A lot of the monkey names are puns, they're kind of amusing, especially depending on what the monkey's doing, or where it is, or something. So, five monkeys down, thank you, Natalie. There we go. And, oh, jeez, what is going... Oh my god, it's Spectre, he's back, and he's got a stylish helmet, and... It's not good. Superior monkeys are merely offering to rule over you poor humans who simply cannot watch out for yourselves. That's kind of true, honestly. I mean, Jimmy really screwed things up here. I bet if the monkeys were supervising, he wouldn't have messed up. He kind of asked, Whoa! It's the it's PlayStation 1 graphics. It's the original Ape Escape, and it's got Japanese text, which I don't remember. Could have been the... What the hell are these? Vita Z? It's glowing banana. I wouldn't eat a glowing banana. That would kind of freak me out, honestly. So yeah, Spectre seems kind of more menacing in this game, honestly. Like, they, they built on his character a bit. He doesn't seem like some weird, neurotic monkey just trying to rule the world. He sounds more like Vegeta than he does some whiny little brat. And here, check this out. This is... Okay, fine, Natalie, you explain it. Okay, Natalie. Well, thanks. Now I don't have to explain it. So you hit, you hit 10 in there, and then you hit this thing, and then the ball comes out, and you break the ball open, and you get... crap like a fortune, and that doesn't make sense. I don't even know any aliens. Hit that again, you get a soundtrack. And, like, you get some cool things and you get some boring things in here. You get a lot of concept art, you get a lot of music. You can get. Oh, crap, you can get these. These are annoying because you can't skip the text, it just keeps going like this. Basically, Monkey Fables, they just take some well known story, like, you know, Jack and the Beanstalk or something, and then they, they monkey eyes it. So, kind of annoying to get them. Keep getting soundtracks. What else is there? Um, you can get upgrades for certain things. You can get cookies in here as well, if you're lucky. Um, you can get lives if you're even luckier. And you get, you know, like, photos of enemies and stuff in the game. And I don't know, kind of cool overall, but if you're just trying to get cookies or something, then you're you're most likely shit out of luck. Oh, holy crap, we get a new... You just keep giving us gadgets. It's a super hoop. I love this thing. You know, this is something else I liked about Ape Escape, too, is it wasn't just like, without training, you're gonna suck at this shit, so... Get in the training room. Like, she's got something interesting to say about each each one, so... Good on you for keeping it original and interesting, Natalie. I'm gonna run into these guys, because that's what the super hoop does. You just spin that analog stick around, you're gonna run faster. You could run up these slopes right here. 
And, you know, it's pretty much the same exact thing as the first Ape Escape. They haven't changed a whole lot in the... Whoop! Yes. I kind of like how they turn the mailboxes into phones, too. That was a cool touch. So we'll run on under that gate before it closes. Get the little collectible thing. There's something I haven't explained about the collectibles yet that's pretty cool. I haven't had a good, um, good opportunity to show it off, but I probably will on this level. If you collect five of the circles, they're going to turn into these little silver star things that are worth five each. And if you collect, um... If you collect five of those, you only have a certain amount of time, obviously, before they change back. But if you collect five in rapid succession, succession they turn into a silver one. And then if you collect five of those, you're going to turn into a big spiky gold one that's worth ten. So if you could collect things really quickly, you could rack up the points and get the hell over here. Jeez, you're too fast. Billy? What kind of name is that? It's... The name's a monkey. Billy is a monkey. Get him in here. He is Pogo. See, that's a monkey name, you know? Billy's just... I don't even know. We'll run up here at the Super Hoop, and well, there's a monkey up here. We'll catch him. And we'll get a slope that's cute, because he's on top of... And as you can see, Jimmy's a little less ungraceful with slopes. He'll just fall flat on his face, so... Whatever, the kid's like eight years old. Catch this monkey. There's a lot of super fast monkeys already, especially since we just got that super hoop. So Carlito is in our net. They got these poop pig things. I'm sure they have some creative name, but I don't care. See, it's a bee that's also an eggplant. How crazy is that? Who thinks up this stuff? Catch you into the net. And that's Trip right there. It's funny because he's a fast runner, but he'll fall on his face a lot, hence the name Trip. You see, they're, they're creative with these monkey names. And the monkeys all feel like they're more... They're more unique. Like, each one of them has this unique feature to it. You got Ole right there. Look, he left his, his little cape and everything. But he's cool because you try to catch him and he sidesteps and, you know... Just like a matador shit, you know? It's, it's pretty cool. That's one thing I really liked about something that 2 did, was all the monkeys feel a lot more unique than they did in the first game. Each one has its own kind of personality to it. They all have these different things they can use. This guy right here, he's got a shield! Look at that! He's gonna block our attack, so we'll just catch him instead. A lot of the monkeys will fit into the level that you're, you're playing as well. You'll find, like, you know, on a castle level, there'll be night monkeys, and, you know, this level right here, there's matador monkeys, stuff like that. It's all pretty cool. There's another cookie right there, thank goodness. Yeah, let's see, we could use a super hoop to fall on her face. That's cool. Alright, we'll get back up here, do that again. I think you could tell that it's some sort of platform you're going to fall off, because it's all shiny and slanted, and you're probably going to fall. You see, they turn into silver ones. I'm not going to have the chance to collect them. But you collect five quick enough, and they change, so... Hit that switch. That that was a mean trick. I'm just going to throw us into this arena. There's a mechanical bull we have to destroy him. He's got a big glowing green weak point on his ass. Trust me on that. It'll show up. And there it is. See? Does that look familiar at all? First game? Anything? So he's not a huge challenge, we'll just keep twirling around. It's cool that you can move while doing this now, it really helps things out. It makes it a lot easier to club things that are giving you trouble. So we'll hit him. He'll explode. And yeah, look at this, this will be a perfect example. We'll drop a ton of these. Start collecting them. They turn silver, and then they're going to turn gold in just a second. See, and then you get ten from that. So, and he's all cut. And you're coming up next, buddy. Dodge that, but you won't dodge this one. El Toro is caught. And they all have that different little circle around them, too. The question mark usually means they're in some sort of uniform, but they still follow the same pattern they did in the first game. Yellow monkeys are generic, light blue monkeys are shy, dark blue monkeys are super fast, the black ones usually have, they're extremely violent. Just stuff like that, you know. Well, what's this? What we got going on here? What's this? What what is this? Just my ass, Jimmy. Pay attention. Oh, it's a pretty crazy looking place. Kid, huh? What the? It this far. Ever hear of the oh my God! It's Captain Falcon. Well, and he's on a 
motor unicycle. How would they make those? Why is he dressed as Captain Falcon? So this is the first of the Freaky Monkey 5 that Spectre was talking about. There's five of them. They pull this whole stupid Power Ranger kind of deal, because what doesn't? And yeah, it's our first legitimate boss fight of the game. And he charges at you with this little shield there, which you could break it with your super hoop, hit him while he's stunned, and then just get away from him because he'll throw bombs or do something else or whatever. <laughs> the arena, the way that works is certain. Sometimes these things will turn yellow like that. You want to get off them before they turn red, because if you're on them when they're red, they're going to fall. So it's easy enough to avoid. It really seems to inconvenience Blue Monkey more than it does yourself, because he'll start to charge at you, realize it's a red bridge, and then yell and just until he can go anywhere. So you just wait for him to start charging again, run at him with your super hoop, and boom, there you go. Hit him while he's stunned, and shit, we gotta get out of shit. Get off up the... Uh, well, that was so close. Good news is, falling off a cliff now, it doesn't cost you a life, it just costs you a single cookie, which, you know, still counts, you gotta hold on to those more, but... It's okay, it won't cost you a full life, which is nice. So we'll club him again. You can tell how far you are in the fight, because his, his little monkey siren thing will change color. Um, blue means he probably just started the fight, yellow means he's kinda midway through, and red means a couple hits will take him out, so... Wait for him to charge again, which he won't do because it's red, of course. See what I mean? This place just seems to really inconvenience Blue Monkey. I don't know why he'd do it. So he's giving up. Let's catch him, steal a stupid motor unicycle thing, and do some laps. Alright, first boss is taken care of. The, the bosses in this game, not too bad, actually. At least they tried. Unlike pretty much any boss in the first game, which they really didn't feel like bosses. But this does a better job. Caught Blue Monkey, and that's one down, four more to go. So, we'll see you for the next part. Have fun, guys.